it's pretty safe to say for anyone around my age range who haven't really gotten into anime that much, late teens, early 20s, hell, maybe even older, the first thing they'll say when they hear about Studio Ghibli is they'll say something about Spirited Away or Howl's Moving Castle or Ponyo or anything that came out in the last 20 years with the exception of My Neighbor Totoro and who can blame them? It's all they really knew on a surface level. But for any millennial or Gen Z Ghibli fan watching this who is curious about their other shit, there was another guy at the driving force of the studio that has been rather quiet since Miyazaki's meteoric rise into the mainstream, more into the limelight, even more than when he was when Princess Mononoke came out, and that guy was Isao Takahata, who comes back into the scene for the first time since 1999, with a film that has been considered one of, if not the greatest film that he's ever made, if you don't like depressing shit. But very little do people know that this film was actually a passion project for Takahata that he kept with him as long as his legendary and storied career. Let's see how this became his crowning achievement on the latest edition of the Studio Ghibli Project, episode 21, The Tale of the Princess Kaguya. The film follows a girl named Kaguya who was found by a bamboo cutter inside a bamboo shoot and decides to take her in as his child alongside his wife. Months go by and it becomes evident that Kaguya has been growing rapidly from a newborn to a teenager in a short span. But when the bamboo cutter finds gold and cloth inside another bamboo shoot, he uses it as proof that Kaguya is royalty and goes out of his way to make her a princess and succeeds as he relocates his family to a mansion and has Kaguya work with a noblewoman to make her more proper for any men who want to take her hand in marriage, giving her a bright future while at the same time pushing her away from the people she met in the village she was raised in and it keeps pushing her away from a normal life. The movie was based off of the 10th century Japanese folktale, The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter, which has been described today as proto-science fiction due to some parts of the story that I won't say here for spoilery reasons, but that wasn't what got Isao Takahata's attention when he first encountered this story. According to a number of interviews Takahata made to promote the film in North America, he wasn't a fan of the story when he first read it as a kid. He didn't empathize with Kaguya, really, is the main complaint from him. Fast forward to the year 1960, Takahata just graduated from the University of Tokyo and just got a job at an animation studio called Toei Animation, where he would start off as an assistant director. During his first few years at Toei, he re-read the bamboo cutter and saw potential in making the story more entertaining and engaging as long as what he had in mind allowed the audience to understand how Kaguya felt, but according to Takahata, because he just got hired, no one really listened to him and the idea was quickly scrapped. Fast forward again to 2008 when Studio Ghibli announced that Takahata will be directing another film and a year later said that it was going to be the story he was longing to adapt. While it is credited for inspiring numerous anime and manga series like Sailor Moon and Inuyasha, there has never been a direct anime adaptation of the story up to this point, and the only direct adaptation overall was back in 1987 with a live action movie titled Princess from the Moon which was nominated for multiple awards in Japan after it came out. To finance the production, the studio was given 5 billion yen, which is approximately 40 million dollars by Nippon TV and their chairman at the time, Seichiro Ujie, which to this day is the most expensive Japanese movie ever made, live action or animated. Unfortunately, Ujie passed away in March of 2011 but not before he saw a part of the script and storyboards from one of his favorite directors. In December of 2012, it was announced that Kaguya will be premiered alongside Hayao Miyazaki's The Wind Rises in the summer of 2013, the first time that's happened since Ghibli released My Neighbor Totoro and Grave of the Fireflies at the same time in 1988. But not only did their distributor Toho announce that it would be postponed due to unfinished storyboards, they had decided to put a positive spin on the news by saying the postponement will also increase the quality of the film, will make the animation better, which I'll talk more about later in the video. After the film premiered in theaters, it was a box office flop, only getting 2.5 billion yen back, which is $27 million, with only $703,000 coming from North American audiences in 29 theaters, which is approximately $24,200 a theater. 
but even though it didn't live up to its expectations financially, it was critically praised across the board, as expected from a Ghibli film 95% of the time. It was the second film from Takahata that got a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes behind Only Yesterday. The production was the topic of a pair of documentaries that both came out in 2013, titled The Kingdom of Dreams and Madness, which covered the production of both Wind Rises and Kaguya, although the film mostly covers Miyazaki, and the second one titled Isao Takahata and His Tale of the Princess Kaguya, which, surprise, covers the production of the film. It's on iTunes right now, I highly suggest you watch it if you are a fan of this film, and just like The Wind Rises, it was nominated for an Academy Award in 2015, but just like The Wind Rises, it didn't win. The Oscar goes to... The honors, my lovely lady. Thank you. Big, Big Hero, Hero 6. 6! Although I was mostly concerned that the Lego movie wasn't even nominated that year, but I digress. Takahata would get another chance at an Academy Award in 2017 as the artistic producer for The Red Turtle, which also didn't win, but that would be his final chance at trying to get an award before passing away in April of 2018 at the age of 82 to lung cancer. But right now, knowing that The Tale of the Princess Kaguya was his last film, holy shit what a final act it was. For anyone who saw my reviews of his past works, which have been a while, I think the last time I reviewed his stuff was back in like June, I've said that just like Miyazaki, Takahata was always able to express a message into his films, but unlike his colleague, it wasn't in this fantastical story like anything he made in the 2000s, but in a grounded setting that was familiar to the audience, and in this case, he turned a story from a millennia ago into a story where people can relate to an overbearing dad who thinks his quote-unquote kid amounts to something greater than he is, and a girl who just wants to go back home, but of course, the majority of the film covers the title character Kaguya. While the tomboy-turned-proper-woman trope is nothing new, but considering the original story came out literally in the 10th century, I'll give it some leeway, I can say this is one of the best renditions of it. Kaguya is very well written, and the way she acts feels natural, showing that she can go with the flow with everyone else of being a princess, while at the same time expressing herself and getting the message across that she doesn't want to do this. The art style is absolutely gorgeous. Takahata worked with longtime Ghibli employees Osamu Tanabe, who did the key animation and character designs, and Kazuo Oga, who drew the watercolor backgrounds, as they decided to take a classical approach in this film with a hand-drawn feel, as in some scenes you can see sketch lines intentionally left in to make the film more atmospheric. They used a combination of charcoal and watercolors to capture the essence of an old folktale, making it look like a Japanese picture scroll come to life, along with the ability to add magic to the mundane, which is similar to, funny enough, a Makoto Shinkai film minus the photorealism. And the use of movement, both with the shots and the characters, make the overall simple visual style very smooth and very satisfying to watch. In addition to the quality change that was promised when the movie was postponed, the film also changed composers. Before, it was going to be Shinichiro Ikebe, who was known for working with Hayao Miyazaki before he created the studio on Future Boy Conan in 1978, I believe, and a large number of Akira Kurosawa films before the last leg of his legendary career in the 80s and early 90s. But after the movie was pushed to a later date, the role now went to Joe Hisaishi, who, at the same time, was working on The Wind Rises, which means for both Ghibli films, he worked on 69 tracks, with a majority of them being 30 seconds to 2 minutes long, and in Kaguya, the soundtrack was a mix of orchestral pieces and piano tracks, but within the movie itself, it fits very well with the ambience that the film has. Ever since he graduated from college, Isao Takahata wanted to make a film that had a message that resonated with anyone, while also trying to make a faithful adaptation to a timeless story in Japanese culture. And when he finally got the chance to make what he wanted, he did not disappoint. Now, as expected in a scenario like this, Hayao Miyazaki and Isao Takahata had a little bit of a friendly rivalry. They both had an equal amount of drive to tell a story, although clearly in years past one of them really showed it. But due to this being Takahata's last film before his death, it would be safe to assume that with Miyazaki working on a film as this video is coming out, albeit again, very slowly, 
He is looking to take the upper hand knowing how much effort his late companion did in making what is now his last hurrah in Ghibli's longest film at 137 minutes. I wouldn't be surprised if 10 years from now, 20 years from now, people will call this film a masterpiece over Grave of the Fireflies because honestly, just like every other film he's come out with, it will hit you harder when you get older and it will give you a non-depressing option if you want to delve into the filmography of what might be the greatest overshadowed director in the history of cinema. And with that, I'm going to give the tale of the Princess Kaguya also a perfect 10 out of 10. Once again, thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, hit the like button down below. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. If you want to see videos I've made in the past, be sure to check out my channel under the description. Jesus Christ, I just realized I have one more left. <laughs> that's hard to believe, man. Well, anyway, that's not going to be the next review. I think everyone can guess what the next review is going to be. I know you're probably excited for it. I know I'm really excited for it. Best guess is I'm already working on it when this video is coming out. But anyway, for now, my name is Payne, and I'll see you in the next video.